Welcome back to the second part of Basic Concepts and we're looking at um, Topic 8 Programming. This is for the IGCSE Computer Science course. As you can see here we're going to be looking at string handling and logical arithmetic and Boolean operators. Okay, so we talked about sequence, selection, iteration, counting and totaling in the, in the previous video. Now, as I just said, we're going to talk about string handling and we're going to be looking at the use of operators. Okay, so string handling. String handling is an important part of programming. String variables are used to store text. These strings contain a number of characters from an empty string with no, um, no characters, which has no characters stored, to a maximum number specified by a programming language. Here are some methods you will need to learn when writing algorithms and programs. So you've got length, substring, upper and lower. Length, we find the number of characters in a string. Um, substring extracting parts of a string and then we're going to use upper and lower for doing uppercase letters and for um, writing lowercase letters. So I'm going to give you some examples using Python. So in the first one we're going to use length and we're going to find the number of characters in the string. Uh, for example the length of the string computer science um, is 16 characters um, with the spaces. The space is um, counted as well. So we're in Python, string one studying computer science, and the list with Tim, Charlie, Tiffany, and Robert. Let's run this and see what happens. So as you can see, it's counted, the length of the string is 25. So we've counted, including the spaces, studying computer science, 25 characters. And that's by using the len on string one. Now I've also used len on list one, and it's counted the number of things, the number of items in the list. So we've got four, okay? Tim, Charlie, Tiffany, and Robert, four different names in list one. And again, the len works for both the string and for the list, okay? I'm gonna move on to substring, and this is extracting parts of a string, okay? For example, the substring computer could be extracted from the string studying computer science. But how do we do this? Well, again, I'm going to go back to Python because we've got string two and this equals studying computer science. And I've got two methods, print string two, and I've got some square brackets here, colon eight. And again, some square brackets with nine colon 17. So I'm going to show you how that works. And for string two, we're going to print, um, and you can see in these square brackets, I've got colon eight. In this one, I've got square brackets nine colon 16. So let's have a look at what that means. Now for the next one, print string colon eight, this would be starting at the first character, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight characters in computer. And then here, we're gonna start after the space, after character nine, and we're gonna go up to character 16, which would give us the word science. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so that's how we can work out the length or rather count the number of characters in a string or a position in a string. And then finally with string handling, I want to look at upper and lower. So again, converting the string to uppercase and then the string to lowercase. Again, I've got a variable called string three and this equals studying computer science is important for the future. And we're going to print upper and we're going to print dot lower. I'll show you how that works. So if I run this, you'll see what happens. And there we go. So upper puts everything in uppercase, and of course lower puts everything in lowercase, which could be quite useful, certainly if you're trying to do some validation if people are inputting text. Okay, for the second part, the final part, we're going to look at arithmetic, logical, and Boolean operators. Obviously we've got the plus sign for addition, the minus sign for subtraction, the star is for multiplication, the slash, forward slash, is for division, the exponent is this little up arrow raised to the power of, and then we've got mod modulus, the remainder from a division, and then we've got div, which is an integer division. Now what I've got is a little activity using Python to write and test a short program to perform these mathematical operations and output the results. So as you can see here, we're going to input two numbers, yeah, number one and number two, and then we're going to do all the arithmetic operations on them, and then we're going to input a third number, and we're going to perform some more calculations, as you can see here. Okay, so here's the Python code I've written. 
So I've commented it with, with hashtags. Get input from the user. So number one, variable number one, and variable number two are both um, integer inputs, number inputs, enter number one, enter number two. And I've created variables for performing the calculations for addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and for the exponent where we're doing to the power of. And then I'm printing the results here, number one plus number two, and so on and so forth, where I'm using these variables again. So if I run this, it's asking me to enter my first number and put two for my first number and three for my second number. You can see we've got all of our answers given two plus three is five, two take away three is minus one, and so on and so forth. Multiply, divide, and then the exponent, two to the three, two times two times two would be eight. Okay. The task is also asking for us to enter a third number. So with this, I'm just going to remove these comments. Okay, so this is the bottom bit. Number three, again, we're going to input a, input a number for variable th um, number three, and then we're going to perform some more results based on number three, but multiplying these two together, multiplying these two, and then we've got the exponent again um, against these two. So let's have a little look at this. I'm going to run it. Okay, so this time I'm going to put 4 and 3. As you see there, we've got our numbers like we had before. But then if I put number 5 in here, so it's given us the results based on the sums we've got here. So this is a great way to have Python doing lots of calculations, and this is only the beginning. In terms of logical operators, programming languages use logical operators to decide which path to take through a program. Here are the ones you will need to know for your IGCSE. So you've got the greater than sign, the um, less than sign, the equal sign, um, and this the same as in maths, but we've also got greater than or equal to, and we've put them side by side, less than or equal to, and then we've got not equal to. In Python, these are slightly different, and I'm going to show you this in Python working now. But as you can see here, we've got double equal sign and we've got exclamation mark equal sign, which is basically not equal to. And this one is equal, absolute equal to. Because when we're assigning values to variables, we use a single equal sign, as you can see up here. OK. And finally, we've got the Boolean operators, which you may be familiar with if you've looked at the logic um, chapter. We've got and, or and not. So programming languages use Boolean operators to decide whether an expression is true or false. Here are some of the ones you will need. So and, both are true, or either one of them is true and not, none of them are true. This is not viable. Okay, and I've got another activity here which I'm going to go through in Python to show you how some of these might work. Okay, so I'm back in Python and with the activity that I've just talked about, um, we've got to input two numbers number one and number two. We're going to compare these two numbers, number one and number two, and we're going to output a suitable message if both both numbers are equal. Output a suitable message identifying which number is the largest, and the same if the number is the smallest, and then output a suitable message if both numbers are equal. So if I go to this first bit, get number one and number two from the user. Number one equals input, enter number one, Number two equals input, enter number two. And then we're going to, if the number one equals equals number two, print number one and number two are equal, else print number one and number two. And then, and we'll come on to this in a, in a later video, I've done a nested if, whereby if number is greater than number, if number one is greater than number two, um, print this, else print this, number two is the largest one. Okay, so if I run this, and I'm going to enter the first number, um, 34, and the second number, 45. As you can see here, number one and number two are not equal, but number two is larger than number one. Okay, so that's the first part of this problem. Now the second part, input another number, number three, output with a suitable message if all the numbers are not equal, Output with a suitable message identifying which number is largest and again which number is smallest and then if all the numbers are equal. So 
Okay, so I'm just going to comment out that. So as you can see, get number three from the user. Number three equals input, enter number three. And then we're going to compare all three numbers. If they're all equal, um, all numbers are equal. Else, if number one is greater than number two and number one, and you can see here we're using the ands, okay, then we've got these messages here. I'll copy this code into the comments in um, along with the other code from this video into um, into YouTube so you can download it. But if I run this now and it will run the first program and it will run the second program, the second part of the program that I get number three, as you can see I've just commented with three apostrophes. Okay, so now I'm going to run this. Okay, just make sure I've saved it. So enter a number, 34, 34, number one and number two are equal, enter a third number, all three numbers are equal. Now if I run this again, I've not got any kind of looping so it stops there, but if I close this and I run it again, run the module, so this time 55, 66, okay number two is larger, but if I enter 77 for number three, it'll say all three numbers are not equal, number three is the largest and number one is the smallest. So there we go, that is the code to solve that problem. Again, using the ands in there and then using some ifs, some elifs and some elses to do the different options throughout the program. Okay, and again, I will copy all of this code into the comments in YouTube. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you very much indeed for watching. I will see you next time. Continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone.